There we go. We are we are good to go, and I will keep an eye out for uh, for Greg if he turns in as a participant. But anyway, welcome. I am uh, Stephen Oliver, and uh, Mindy, how many years have I been doing high level marketing in various industries now? Um, I just had a birthday, so I hate to uh, I hate to um, um, uh, <laughs> admit the uh, uh, the reality, but I uh, I guess I got deep into direct sales even all the way back into uh, um, junior high and high school, but uh, um, ended up uh, studying marketing aggressively while living in Washington, D.C. And in the age pre-internet, I think we forget how uh, how much different it was in the age pre, you know, before online courses and even uh, ubiquitous um, uh, Barnes and Noble stores. Uh, but I actually... Uh, Spent um, uh, while I was uh, finishing up a degree in international economics at Georgetown, spent uh, the bulk of my time available at the Federal Trade Commission going through marketing and sales manuals of any number of big companies that they had, uh, for my benefit and pleasure, it seems, subpoenaed during different hearings and so forth that I stumbled across uh, while doing a policy um, um, class at uh, the Federal Trade Commission and then uh, spent um, um, the bulk of at least a couple of summers at the uh, Library of Congress reading everything I could get my hands on on direct response marketing and my early forays into marketing were uh, uh, were heavily direct mail dependent um, back then. And um, um, so uh, quick, quick bio. I, uh, I uh, went to Georgetown thinking I was going to go on to uh, get an MBA at Harvard or Wharton and on to, on to Wall Street. And in fact, interviewed with uh, a bunch of the big Wall Street firms and banks and so forth, and then decided the idea of new, new, moving to New York at that time period wasn't as appealing as it seemed on first glance, and uh, ended up moving to uh, Denver, Colorado, and opening uh, five martial arts schools in uh, 18 months, six and 30 months, and and uh, built that up to uh, 3,500 active clients, students, uh, with, by the time I was, uh, uh, what, many, 25 years old. Uh, yeah. So, uh, quite a long time ago now, and um, um, I became I became so high profile in the in the uh, city that I ended up with business owners of all ilks um, approaching me. But it, it tended to be dominant with uh, financial services, commercial real estate brokers, uh, big law firms, etc., all wanting to know how I was doing marketing, advertising, management, sales processes across this pretty big organization. Uh -huh. And by high profile, I mean, we were on 30 second spots on the Oprah TV show, uh, five o'clock news, seven o'clock news, nine o'clock news, had uh, infomercials running continuously uh, through the week and on the weekends. Uh, we're on page three of the TV guide, uh, what's known as ROP, run a paper advertising in the um, uh, major daily newspapers that the time Denver had to Denver Post and the Rocky Mountain News. Uh, so I was, I was, Pretty much everywhere, and there's our other panelist. I uh, go. I am going to promote him to uh, uh, to panelist here, and uh, uh, I ended up uh, shifting from owning uh, multiple retail businesses and promoting one of the biggest live events in the country and uh, a number of other things, and uh, shifted to coaching and developing uh, uh, various small businesses, uh, starting out with martial arts schools and very pretty very quickly shifting into the financial services field with uh, actually my advisor. Uh, you know, we would sit down and talk about business and he would try to figure out how I was, you know, doing what it was I was doing. And I ended up uh, shifting into uh, coaching and consulting with him uh, behind the scenes for any number of years. And he's a top one, one tenth or one one hundredth of one percent within uh, one of the biggest organizations in the world. Uh, but there's Greg. Uh, hey, and good. so uh, uh, we're joined by Greg Moody. Uh, who we tease a lot as being schizophrenic since he's both an engineer and a psychologist, uh, PhD in psychology and an education background, as well as a uh, um, an engineering degree. But Greg, you've been in, uh, um, to a great extent in my camp with uh, uh, focusing on direct response marketing, effective sales processes, scripting and so forth, what now, for 20 some years. That's about right. Yeah, we'll quite, quite a while. And Mindy, you come from an interesting background of uh, of promoting live events with uh, uh, with Eventbrite and with youth um, youth specialties. Uh, you did um, author promotions, marketing, 
uh, development uh, for for various books in that in that genre, and then helped to run, orchestrate, and more importantly, promote live events all the way up to I think your biggest was forty five thousand people. Uh, yeah. You know, probably the biggest audience I've spoken to was about twenty thousand, but the the biggest event that we promoted live uh, would have been thirty eight hundred to four thousand, probably probably in 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 that range. Um, hundreds of events in the in the hundreds and uh, uh, many many events in, into the thousands. Uh, but anyway, and, and and Greg, you have a very similar situation where you've done public speaking extensively. You've had to do sales scripting, marketing. Uh, sales process scripting and so forth for your own uh, organization that you owned and then have uh, evolved um, through my organization and through a couple of other organizations that we work with on on uh, focusing on online marketing, uh, pay-per-click, Google search optimization websites, but also focusing on the, the sales scripting process and the developmental as well as developing authors, um, uh, self-published books, and, and et cetera. Anything, anything to add, either either one of you guys, before we move forward? Well, well, really, what we what we are all working on is everything from A to Z that you guys need to do to that all of our clients need to do to get themselves uh, noticed, get themselves known, so that you can get uh, and and really get uh, responses from the clients that you want to have. Uh, yeah. so that you can generate enough business so you get a flood of leads and then help you with your processes so that you can you can get them get them started with you and uh and have high quality clients uh you know that it's it's not just generating business but it's also making sure that your clients get uh, stay with you and uh, continue to stay with you for a long time that's right that's right well and 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 even as important is that that ends up being multi generational wealth management, so that you're getting the kids and the grandkids under under your umbrella, so that you're accelerating referrals. And as we know, most most advisors' referral strategy uh, tends to kind of fall into camp A. I don't want to ask, and so I'm just going to be do as good a service as I can, and my clients are going to talk to me, talk about me a lot, which of course really doesn't happen. In fact, uh, Michael Kitch has had a great uh, blog on his site. Uh, you know, they're not very sales focused um, uh, and marketing focused, but this one was really good about the gap between your clients talking to you, talking about you to their friends uh, and the gap between their friends actually communicating with you. And and there's a, a huge gap that, that we have many different systems to solve, but there's a huge gap between um, your clients thinking well about you then your clients having a conversation with their friends about you, and then you actually getting the, the friends contact information and communicating with them. So there's a, a, a huge gap in that as well that I think most people don't think of. But hey, our topic today is how to be a Maverick advisor. And I, I, I want to go at this from a couple of different angles. But the probably the first thing that I learned, and God, what would it be, Greg, back when I was 20, uh, um, 23, 24, 25 years old, is the first thing I learned is every breakthrough idea that I ever brought into my my business are things that I stole from, borrowed from, observed from other industries, other business formats, were very rarely what my quote unquote so-called competitors were doing. You know, I could have looked around at the time and looked at my competitors in 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 this case the Colorado market, and I could have imitated them all day long, and I still would have been broke and um, um, had a slowly growing uh, organization. Instead, what I did is I looked at what everybody else was doing. And this is before I, I knew the great Earl Nightingale quote. Earl Nightingale's quote many years ago was, if you don't have a great success system uh, to follow, look around at what everyone else is doing and do the opposite. And I, I swear, I, I, I couldn't come up with an industry where that quote fits better than um, uh wealth managers, financial advisors, and the whole financial services. Really what it is, is, is everybody's looking around at each other and trying to be exactly alike. And, and the distinction, differentiation, and, and uniqueness is just, is just non-existent. Is, is that an a, 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 a overstatement, or is that a fair way to say that? Yeah, it's very, it's very much the same. Everybody we talk to and everything, everything we, uh, we look at, everybody's trying to repeat the same exact thing over and over again. And then you look the same, you look like everybody else. And then why should anybody work with you? Yeah. Yeah. And look at, by looking, we don't mean black, white, Asian, 
you know, male, female, but we, we mean just, you know, the same template over and over and over again with no distinction, no uniqueness, no um, um, specialty. Uh, it, it, it's so important to stand out, not fit in uh, when it comes to any industry, but but this one more than any. And, you know, I, I was watching, uh, you know, the interviews with uh, with Elon Musk about um, um, artificial intelligence. And I got to tell you, you know what? Uh, uh, lawyers, accountants, financial advisors are all uh, right for being replaced by artificial intelligence. This is going to be a white collar decimation, right? And you know, advisors already know you have the robo advisor revolution. So if you're just a clone of everybody else and you're nothing special and you don't specialize in something and look look different, you know, why not use automation rather than a human being? I mean, the the value of the human being, honestly, is to keep people from you know, I mean, you you can simplify it all the way down to keeping them from, uh, you know, buying high, selling low. Uh, but it's to really put together the pieces and have them have a trusted voice that they follow. Uh, but the l- let's talk about elements of being a Maverick advisor. In, 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 in my view, element number one is what I was just talking about is look at what everybody else is doing. If you don't have a great system, and I believe that we do, but if you don't have a great system, make a conscious effort not to do what everybody else is doing. Right. But the, um, uh, the element about that is be looking for not all of the naysayers saying we've tried that before. It didn't work. That'll never work for us. That'll never work in our industry, but look at how do I become unique and special uh, with, from the perspective of my ideal target client, how do I risk polarizing in other words, how do I attract the people I want to attract and repel the people that I don't want to attract? How do I look around at what everybody else is doing and not look like them and not be an equal replacement? Again, I'll, I don't know if it was Kitches or if it was you know um, uh, somebody else, but I was listening to a podcast and he said it's a horrible environment where people choose their financial advisor based on what zip code they're at. And you know that's that's the um, um, the mythology of the big companies, I know, you know, that's Northwestern and Mass Mutual and so forth is pointing people at an advisor based upon, you know, what your street address is more or less. Uh, but it's also the buying lead saying of, you know, uh, find somebody in, in, in your neighborhood. Well, if you're the right person for me, if I'm a, if I'm a, let's say a business owner of, of a business is doing seven to $10 million, I'm getting ready, ready for a liquidity event and um, uh, prepping for a sale. I want to find the specialist who's going to help me facilitate that to invest the money properly and to help me not get, uh, not end up broke. I don't want the guy who happens to have the retail space down the street from me. I mean, oh, there's an Edward Jones in the, in the uh, parking lot in the, in the next shopping center over uh, from me. Uh, uh, Greg, I mean, you've seen it right next yep. to the, the chart house there. That that's if, 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 if I'm, if I'm the business owner and I'm looking for that, that day and time, that's not the guy that's going to stick in my mind. It's going to be the person who specializes in helping entrepreneurs build, sell, and and retain the money and 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 manage it in in, in that example, right? So, so to be a maverick on, um, um, advisor, you want to not be doing the same things everybody else is doing. Two is uh, going back to our premise, which is the way we build all of our marketing systems around, kind of like the facade of Wall Street there behind me, is you build a Parthenon of different feeders for for traffic. And really what we like to do is get a really clear, I hear some of the marketing people call it an avatar, a real clear picture of who it is you want as a client. And then once you have that ideal client in your mind, that avatar client, if you will, you build system after system after system after system that's designed to get their attention, get them to raise their hand, to educate them, drip on them, um, uh, involve them in your world and your environment, and then to eventually uh, or quickly convert them into a, a live conversation and convert them into a client. Uh, so element number two is creating that Parthenon of approaches. I'd say element number three is always target a very specific niche. And that can become, that can be because you built your avatar. It has to be, you've built your avatar client, but then you have to figure out in what small areas do they hang out, right? If I want to be the person who 
specializes in plastic surgeons, then we know that we can find all kinds of places where plastic surgeons hang out. I can go speak to their association. I can uh, attend their meetings. I can be in their magazines. I can be in their online forums. I can I can be the person who writes the book on how a, fi- a, a plastic surgeon can go from cash flow to wealth and how they can build their practice up and sell it, how they can maintain their practice, but, but uh, pass it on to the next generation, whatever it might be. But I can be that specialist for that. But until I've targeted that, what I end up doing is just, you know, I, 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 uh, I, I talk to my warm circle of influence and then I end up randomly creating referrals from them. And it is just it's completely random. Uh, that's the wrong way to go about it. What would you add to that, Greg? Well, yeah, and I, I think it's important for everybody to, that's listening. They may be thinking that, yeah, but if I market to everybody and we, we have so many people we talk to, we say, well, what's your ideal client? And they say, oh, 55 to 65 year old people with half a million dollars in investable assets. Okay. Yeah. So you same target to, of everybody else. Everybody has the same target. And what that also means is to that group of people, which is really homogeneous, you know, you, you, you're not, you're, you're not special at all. I mean, you're going to take anybody that meets those criteria and you you don't meet, you don't have anything to say to them. That means you're special for them. You're not the one who works with business owners that are uh, machinists or the one that works with uh, plastic surgeons, like you just said, or the one that works with um, uh, construction owner, construction company owners, or you're the one that knows some special things about people that are um, in, in certain situations. So when, when mm-hmm. those people hear your message, when they hear who you are, they're going to go, oh, that's the person I want to talk to. Like you just said about somebody who's a business owner that's getting ready to sell their business. If I hear that, oh, this person works with people like that, even if I wasn't looking for a different investment advisor, I might have somebody that I'm working with now, I hear, oh, this person specializes in plastic surgeons, and I'm a plastic surgeon, I go, well, gee, I want to listen to that guy, what is he saying, Why? What, what do they have to offer me that might be different than the dude that I've been working with for 20 years, um, it, it's going to resonate with people. And we get so often that people think, well, if I'm marketing to everybody, then wouldn't that be a bigger group? And it's actually the opposite because your message is so diluted. Your message is really nothing, essentially. If you're everything to everybody, you're nothing to nobody. And I think that's an important thing, especially at this point when we keep telling people they need to have an ideal client. They think that's limiting, but it really is opening the door to a group. And it doesn't mean there couldn't be more than one group, but really when we start with somebody, what, what's the a first group that they want to work with? And then maybe there's another group they want to layer onto that, but, but they should be something specific to somebody so that then they can focus their marketing and they'll get a much, much better response for every minute that they spend or dollar that they spend in the effort that they put together. Yeah. And, 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 uh, you know, I, I see among other things in our backgrounds, you know, Greg, you have your uh, uh, BA, master's, PhD certificates. Mindy, you have your your master's. I have, a, you know, what the hell I have on the wall. Yeah, I have the MBA oh, certificate and the, 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 the Georgetown diploma and a bunch of martial arts stuff while, while, while we're on the, uh, on, the, on the topic of certificates. But the, see, the, the worst way to differentiate yourself is to hold out the alphabet soup of all the degrees and all the certifications and so forth and think that anybody cares about that, right? Um, you know, Greg, you and I both come from a martial arts background and, you know, we learned long, long, long time ago that the mom of a seven-year-old bringing their daughter in, she doesn't know sixth degree, seventh degree, ninth degree, uh, certificate rank style, doesn't know about any of that stuff. And even if she did, she doesn't have any reason to care. What she wants to know is about how what we're doing can be a benefit to our seven-year-old daughter and how the development process is going to be for her seven-year-old daughter. She wants to know whether the people there that are going to be working with her seven-year-old daughter are going to be people that she's comfortable with, that she likes, that she um, feels are going to be good role models and good developmentally. And the, the same thing is is true more in uh, or or equally, I guess, 
perhaps with with advisors is, you know, your 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 clients in most cases. Um, you can list all your certifications and all that stuff, and you can put all that stuff out there. And, and there is a time and place that probably that's reasonable, but it's not a good marketing tool. It's not something that the average person who has 2 million or 5 million or half a million or 50 million to invest, they don't care about that. They care more about the person. They care about the personality. They care about one that, you know, in the the day and age of, you know, I mean, how many scandals do we have? I mean, right now, HBO is running, you know, starring De Niro, the Bernie Madoff uh, uh, story, the, the next iteration of reminding people of that. Uh, and at the same time, you have the Bankman Freed um, uh, whole scandal and, and, and stuff going on with that. And you have a couple of other similar things is when you're in an industry that's rife with, um high profile stories of untrustworthy people uh, liquidating and disappearing people's assets. You want to make sure that people see you as a relatable human being and as an honest human being, as somebody who is like they are. Right. Um, and so I don't know how that gets left out of the mix so often, but it, but it certainly does is the, if nothing else, a maverick advisor is somebody who leads with, their hobbies, their interests, their enthusiasms, right? Um, Greg, I am certainly not one of them. Um, you know, wait, wait, wait a minute, you know, behind me, so I have the boxing glove signed by Muhammad Ali and the guitar signed by Fleetwood Mac. So, you know, I, I, I my, my, the limit of my sports enthusiasm is, is combat <laughs> sports and, and the recency of my boxing enthusiasm probably goes to uh, Holyfield Tyson, but you know, you're a sports fan, right? And so, um, I always, I always butcher it, which is the Arizona team, ASU or Arizona ASU? state. We like, we don't Arizona, want to do university of Arizona, Arizona state. Okay. Yeah. We but, like Arizona state. But see, uh, you know, every now and then we see advisors who like wear that on their sleeve. Right. And I remember years ago, my, uh, you know, slightly different category, but still in the same ilk, my life insurance and my home and auto and, and, uh, uh, everything else was with my state farm guy. And you walked into uh, John McCain's office and he had Razorbacks everywhere. And this is in Denver, right? So, I mean, it's not like he was in Fayetteville. So he's got the big, you know, stupid red head and, you know, the suey pig stuff and, and everything. But it was endearing. You remembered him and he anchored it in. It was engaging and, and so forth. Um, but part of being a Maverick advisor can be that. It can be instead of talking about the incremental return on their on their retirement funds as the the lead conversation because that puts any and everybody to sleep you know talk about coaching your kids soccer team or talk about your enthusiasm for Arizona state or talk about your enthusiasm for you know whatever it might be but your hobbies your interests uh your passions and again you know, we have this argument back and forth a little bit. And, you know, part of the conversation uh, oftentimes is people are told never to talk politics or religion or or whatever, politics, religion or sex. But uh, I got to tell you, if if your target audience is the local Jewish community, then you better wear it on your sleeve, right? If your target audience is you know, liberal 55 year old uh, divorced or widowed women in uh, in the Bay Area, then you wear it on your sleeve. You join all their clubs, you join the organizations and you you wear it on your sleeve and you you be part of that. You you have to make a decision. And we've had advisors who want to target ultra conservative, conservative political groups, various religious groups, one thing or another. But it, it you, you don't pick an audience like that that you want to target without being dyed in the wool one of them right and and wearing that on your sleeve and that and that doesn't mean you ever have to pick pick an area to be offensive to the you know to the general public unless you have picked and make a stand in a particular niche right and then you want to go all in on that niche so i think part of, of being a maverick and i see this certainly the you know the bigger organization the more all of their advisors look exactly alike right is they have the same LinkedIn profile. And in fact, most of the um, captive people have the same crap that's being posted, you know, uh, by the organization for them, all of which is milk toast, And it's all either feel good woman on top of the mountain in a yoga pose 
or it's um, uh, stuff that's about um, uh, stability or return. And it's not things that are interesting, engaging that that uh, their target audience is going to pay attention to. Well, and you think as the advisor, you're getting benefit from your from the organization because they're doing this stuff for you. But if it's the same boring stuff that they're posting all the time, it's not really helping you. And from a you know from a marketing point of view, from online search or any of that point of view, it's not helping you either. They're not yeah. going to find you. Um, that's not going to help you get noticed. In fact. It's just as likely that other people are going to get noticed than than you, and, and you're just going to be, as you said earlier in the conversation, uh, they're going to somebody's going to find you because of zip code, which is not a good way to go because lots of other people in your zip code. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, and and what we've uh, you know the different topic, but what we've what we've talked about uh, again and again is people are not uh, not distinguished online, not distinguished in any other area, so that it's very hard to find you. No, that, 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 that's exactly right. So uh, again, I think the next step on, on being a Maverick advisor is when I went into business and I, let's go back and, and before you jumped on and we had a few people who were here early, which, you know, uh, thanks for, for guys tuning in early. But when, before you, you jumped on, I was talking a little bit about, you know, my background before I opened my, uh, uh, my first business when I was still in school and an employee. And I, I had figured out pretty quickly that I was learning a really good sales process and was pretty good at face-to-face -face interaction, closing a sale, closing a sale for, you know, high dollar amounts and so forth. But I really had no idea how the pipeline was being filled with people coming in the front door, right? I could see it in action. I could see TV ads and newspaper ads and articles and so forth, but I really didn't understand what the, what the process was. And if, if you're going to be something more than a glorified salesperson within a big company, if you're truly going to be a seven figure earner in a financial services business, uh, developing a solid uh, base of clients, you really have to be thinking of yourself as an independent business owner, regardless of what corporate uh, umbrella that you're under or what your, your environment is. And if you're thinking of yourself as an independent business owner, that means you're responsible for creating a new client and keeping that client long term. You've, as, as a business, independent business owner, you've got to get really knowledgeable of and really good at all of the processes to bring people in the door. And you've got to continue to develop and refine your own sales methodology to make it duplicatable, right? I mean, if if everything is on your shoulders, if if your new clients are only coming in because you ask a current client who they know and your current clients are only being sold because you're doing a face-to-face belly-to-belly, you don't really have anything that can scale, right? You can't delegate, you can't bring in uh, marketing people to help you or anything. And I think the other myth is the myth of farming out a piece of the marketing and relying on them. I mean, uh, well, we've seen Mindy uh, a whole bunch of times recently our advisors who hand off the Facebook advertising or hand, hand off the LinkedIn advertising or or they hand off their event, live event promotions, but they never really get underneath the covers, underneath the, uh, the skin of the thing and understand how it's working so that they can make sure that it's working effectively for them. With the live event promotion, remember we, we did uh, just recently, we went th thoroughly through uh, one of our advisor clients' um, uh, live event promotions handled by something else turned out their their targeting was off. Their targeting yeah. was way too broad. And he's trying to solve he's trying to solve the sales conversion problem. And the real problem was they were putting the wrong people in the room to begin with, right? They were putting some of the right ones, but then they were scooping up a whole bunch of people who weren't the right ones. And and by the way, they were telling him that that's as good as they could do targeting. It took us 32 seconds of walking through online databases to say, well, I could niche down to this and I can niche down to this. And I can target this and I can target this. You know, we could do, you know, you could do, they could do a much better job of targeting the right people to put in the room. Right. And, and then you'd be much better off. And the examples of that are endless. Right. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we see people who use agencies to, uh, uh, and we do too, um, but use agencies for LinkedIn advertising, for Google advertising. In fact, you facilitate the the, the Google site for a lot of people um, or the Facebook advertising. But if they don't know what that person is trying to accomplish, 
the metric that the outsourced company uses and the metric that you need to use for return on investment oftentimes are at odds with one another, right? Is on a website, you don't care about so much traffic. You care about opt-ins. You care about um, um, people who will convert to appointments, who will convert to customers. On social media marketing, it's not so much that you want you know, a big email list. You want a person who's truly interested in your services and gets educated to the point that they're willing to sit down with you face to face. And I often see what their metric for success is and what your metric for success be on, on two different planets. And if you don't understand the marketing principles on the way through the door, then you get lost in the in the haze on that stuff. Well, what would you what would you add to that, Greg? Yeah, no, that's exactly right. I mean, I think when we talk to people, a lot of times they're getting uh, because they're just trying to abdicate and throw throw their marketing over the fence. And sometimes they want to throw it over the fence to us too. They're not understanding what's really going on. And so therefore they're really tossing money away. And we get a lot of people coming to us say, well, I tried that. I tossed money at this, or I tossed money at that, or I trust money and it didn't work. So I'm going to abandon it. Well, a lot of times those things like LinkedIn or Facebook or, or doing something better for their website or doing some other types of marketing will work just fine, but it was done incorrectly. And it was done uh, in in some way that wasn't going to be effective for their type of market or their niche. And with either, number one, doing what you said first, which is a better job of identifying their ideal client. And number two, tweaking the way the marketing was done. And unfortunately, a lot of these companies that people throw mar marketing money at, you know, do it a very sloppy and ineffective way. And so that's what we can help you figure out is how to do it in a much more effective and precise way so that you can get really good results. And these results can be 10 to uh, 10 times, 20 times, 30 times better. And I'm not exaggerating about that. I mean, we just, we frequently talk to people doing live events and that's not the only thing, but let's just use that as an example. And they're, they're really uh, sloppy about how uh, when leads come in, whether or not they're doing good confirmations on the way in to get a better turnout at the event. So they accept really crappy turnout and the marketing company says, oh, that's what you just get. Um, they're not doing enough pre-follow-up uh, or pre-calls to make sure that they could get, they could get a lot of appointments prior to their event. And then after they're doing a lousy job, um, and it, it's not the advisor necessarily, but they're not getting good advice from their marketing company, frankly, because the marketing company often doesn't know any better. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, let, 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 let's shift gears here for, for a second, but I, I, I want to summarize a couple of things. I mean, a true Maverick advisor needs to have sev several elements in place. One is they've got to look around what everybody else is doing and not do the same as everybody else is doing. In fact, um, just have the mindset of there's so much more to do. I need to stand out, be different, behave differently, look differently, operate differently than the, the general market. The last thing we talked about is you've got to look at what you're doing beyond just the sales role or beyond just the planning role. And you've truly got to take control of, understand and manage the marketing process for your, your own small business. And that doesn't mean you can't use outsourcers. Outsourcers are, are very useful if you know what it is they're supposed to accomplish. You're, you know, understand the process and you give them good directions on what you're trying to accomplish. But there's a big difference between delegating uh, to somebody, whether they're an employee, a 1099, um, um, you know, for perhaps virtual assistant or whether they're a, a, a an outsourcer is a big difference between delegating and abdicating. You want to be able to delegate. You never want to abdicate responsibility. Right. And the uh, uh, the other element is is you want to pick a niche. You want to create an avatar client, an ideal target client, but then you want to create a niche of people, whether they are have a um, an affinity to you through hobby, affinity to you through nationality background, affinity to you through um, um, organization, association, belief system, or or strictly that you've decided to become the expert for. Procter and Gamble or or Vonage or whoever it is, um, retirement plan, or you've become the experts for dentists or plastic surgeons or lawyers or whatever it might be. But you've got to hone in and become the go-to person in that niche or in that area. And 
anyway, to, to, to shift for a second, I wanted to share this with everybody. This is this is still on the on a, a kind of a pre-launch phase, but I, I want to share this with everybody. This is a um, a new, um, if if you will, um, um, program that we have launched, and we really have two levels. We have we have a a, a, a program that's a really personalized, focused coaching and development process designed for advisors who are in the quarter million, 300,000 and up range, and oftentimes into the seven figures, well into the seven figures. And then we have one, uh, a program designed for those who are at below that point. And this is the one that's, that's below that point. And we're, we refer to this as, as our inner circle, but it really looks like this, is the deliverables are any number of different things. And I can show you here on screen what they are. But the, the objective here is this is an implementation program. It's a process where each month we're going to delve deep into how to find a, an effective niche market, how to effectively market with webinars, how to effectively market with personalized live events, uh, in-person live events, how to effectively market on LinkedIn, how to effectively market on Google, how to effectively market on Facebook, how to use email appropriately and effectively, how to use direct mail effectively and appropriately. And, and those elements are tactics. More importantly, we work on the strategy, the strategy of becoming the go-to expert, the person who stands out above and, and, and uh, uh, ahead and his shoulders above everybody else in your market uh, for a particular group of people. And again, we discussed you know, how that might break down by hobby, by profession, by company. But we talk about the bigger strategies of really standing out, of, of looking different, of being a specialist in your area and being a specialist for a group of people. And then the tactics, and again, the tactics of, of attracting new people can be online, offline, live event, um, you know, traditional advertising. Um, it can be uh, all the modern social media platforms and so forth. But, you know, we stay way ahead of the curve and familiar with all those things and off, off, are, are very good, I might add, at avoiding always the bright, shiny pill syndrome of, of looking at, oh, wow, we should be doing a bunch of stuff on TikTok and really focus on where your target audience is hanging out and what the best way to get there. And what, what you see kind of in this uh, description here is a combination of strategies and tactics. But every month, what we, well, maybe I should throw up what we start with, and I've got this here on my desk, is we start with really the complete um, support mechanisms for how to really understand your own marketing. This is, uh, uh, some of you may have this already, but this is the manual that goes with this program. Uh, we call it the Complete Fill Your Practice Program, but we're throwing this as an, in as a bonus. We created this uh, Greg, as you remember, most of it we yeah. created in Annapolis, Maryland, down the street from uh, the Naval Academy. But we created this as really a $2,750 program. And then um, we had the crazy idea, and I do think it's crazy and uh, not going to do it for very long, throwing in it as a, throw it in as a free bonus uh, for this inner circle program. So anybody who, who registers uh, for that program today, we're, we're actually going to go way in the hole shipping all this stuff to you. Um, but the ongoing um, program is a combination of the foundation to get you started. And then it's every month we're sharing uh, this program by Lee Meltier. We call it the Millionaire Millionaire Sparks program. And everything we're, we're giving you, we're giving you physically. So you're getting physical newsletters, you're getting physical CDs and DVDs, but you're also getting all of it streaming and downloadable. So if you prefer to download it and stream it on your iPhone, if you prefer to stream it um, on your uh, Android device or at your desktop or whatever, or if you prefer to put the CD in your uh, uh, cassette player, if you still have one in your car, whatever whatever it might be, you're going to get all, all of those formats. But the the monthly elements are this, is again, going back to differentiating between strategies and tactics is every month you're going to get um, my Mile High Maverick newsletter. And it focuses almost exclusively on strategy. 
how you should be thinking about implementation, how you should be positioning yourself in the world, how you should be uh, setting yourself up to attract the attention of the right people and to be ignored or repel the people that you don't want. Um, and then every month we're going to um, work on what we call a monthly mastery session. And it's a specific tactic every month that we'll go on a deep dive on a element, for instance, how to do um, all the different elements you can use in, say, LinkedIn uh, to get new quality uh, clients or how you can use other social media platforms or how you can use Google or how you can use direct mail. So each month we'll do a deep dive on one uh, topic, which is one of the tactics that support the strategy that we'll be teaching you all the way along the line. Uh, you have open access to, uh, to Mindy Godfrey here, to uh, Greg Moody and myself through our discussion forum. And we also have uh, a number of other people on our team, Merrick, who's our technical behind the scenes guy uh, for anything that Mindy or Greg can't handle for you. Uh, we've got uh, Bob Dunn, who's a, a specialist in uh, client service and sales, and Jeff Smith, who's a specialist in um, big organization operations, staff development, and so forth. But we have the discussion forum where you can ask any question at all. Oftentimes what happens is uh, people ask questions ahead of our monthly, and I'm getting to this, our monthly Q&A. So we do an open Zoom meeting, not like what we're doing right now. I mean, this is more of a webinar format, but a, a purely open, everybody's on camera, everybody's open mic, um, Q&A once a month. So every month we'll deep dive on a tactic we have the ability to ask questions after the fact on that topic. And then a couple of weeks later, we do an open Q&A uh, where any and all questions get answered about that topic or about anything else that people are, are implementing. And then all of this material as we as we move along gets archived in the, uh, the member discussion forum and in the, in the member website. So you'll have access to that constantly. And the last piece of it that I, that I mentioned a minute ago is this is Lee Miltier's material, which is high level business development. And what we find is as we work with uh, advisors is advisors at the lower level, uh, let's say that they're making um, uh, uh, less than a uh, hundred thousand or, or they're making less, they, they're bringing in less than a quarter million in revenue is they have very different problems than people who are in the two, three, four, five million dollar category. Uh, the, at the lower level, the mission is is getting enough new clients to uh, grow the practice adequately, and it's targeting the right people because oftentimes even the flow of people they get are the wrong ones. They end up, you know, driving out to have a meeting at the trailer park with somebody who couldn't put, you know, rub two dimes together, for instance. Uh, and it's, uh, but eventually it becomes about getting systems to work through other people. It becomes about automating systems to support uh, a developing flow of processes. It becomes a, about creating higher level client communications. Um, what we're very focused on, by the way, is referral marketing, but re referral marketing, not from the standpoint of just begging people for who do they know, but creating events, webinars, customer service and appreciation events, educational events, uh, creating a series of books, uh, a series of reports, pass along tools that they can share with their their friends and avoiding what I mentioned before, which is they talk to their friend, but you never talk to their friend, creating the the situation where the friend is coming into your realm, you're capturing the information, you're creating an on ongoing dialogue and, and support process with them rather than uh, it just being an empty conversation that got had over lunch somewhere. Um, Mindy, Greg, anything to add to this? Did I did I describe um, what we do on an ongoing basis fairly well? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think we we should uh, post the link in the in the chat so that people can. Uh... Oh, absolutely! Yeah, it's uh, financialadvisorwealth.com forward slash inner circle, and I'm going to post that in the discussion forum right now. And what um, um, what what I didn't mention, by the way, and I will uh, I will I will go back to uh, to mention that. I didn't mention the price is um, the price for this program. And it's an ongoing monthly developmental program is nine ninety seven a month. Um, the pre launch right now in April is a ridiculous two hundred and forty seven dollars a month. So, I mean, in the in the in the first year, 
uh, you're going to have barely paid for the value of the free bonuses that come along with the with a program. I mean, and for most of you, it's rounding error is probably less than your monthly Starbucks bill. It certainly is less than mine. Um, but it's it's a as I said before, it's an ongoing implementation program that combines proper strategies of how to think about and and go about targeting and developing your business combined with tactics. And the, the the challenge we get a lot of times is people say, well, I understand that I need to do this. I just don't know what to do next. Well, the tactics is what to do next, right? It's how to create a presence online. It's how to create a presence in social media. It's how to directly target the people. You know, for instance, I use the example of, of plastic surgeons, how to go directly find where they hang out and get in front of them in the most effective way possible, rather than just try to communicate randomly to whoever happens to have friended you in social media and hope for the best, right? Um, but um, uh, well, we're launching this at two forty seven a month, and that's a very limited time thing because we're just we're just uh, launching it at that till we have all of the kinks worked out and have a, a few people in the program, and then it's immediately going to jump jump up and then jump up again. But the, uh, what this is going to be uh, within the next 90 days is 947 uh, a month or 997 a month. Uh, so if you want to jump on this, uh, jump on it today, we're going to immediately ship you the package of information and the physical book I showed you, but we'll also immediately give you full access to it online. So again, if you prefer to stream it in the car, uh, watch videos at your desktop, or if you prefer to put a CD in your uh, in your uh, CD player in your car, what, how, whatever me method is best for you to consume the material, you'll get it in in that uh, method. Uh, the monthly newsletter is uh, will be available online, but it's mailed to you every month. Um, again, I I'm kind of in the mode. I don't know about you two, but I'm in the mode of I really don't sign up for digital only stuff. You know. I'll, I, I, I found way too many times I've signed up for things that are digital only, and then I forget that I'm a part of it, or you know the uh, the email with my password gets lost in the in the shuffle of the other 300 a day, and it's gone forever. Um, and then of course you can't figure out how to how to cancel it. We make that easy as well. But um, yeah, this just yeah, just to be clear, their rate stays at the 247 ongoing. It won't jump up when we jump the price up for everybody else. So you guys get the special deal. That's that's right. It does make me a little sick to my stomach, but we have agreed to grandfather yeah. in anybody who joins. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it, 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 as as long as you stay active, we'll grandfather you in at the annoyingly low rate of uh, of two forty seven a month. Um, but physically, you'll get the um, uh, the newsletter delivered every month. Physically, you'll get the uh, Millionaire Sparks uh, uh, content. Physically, you'll get this full program, and physically, you'll get the the book. All of those will be available online and digitally, in fact, digitally immediately upon you registering as well. And then the monthly uh, 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 mastery session uh, happens live online, but then you'll have the recording available and the monthly Q&A session happens live online and you'll have the recording available and the discussion forum. And of course, the online resources are are available 24 seven. So you have um, full time access to that. And and a responsive uh, team of people who will get back to you in, in relatively short order. You know, my commitment is within 48 to 72 hours, and Mindy's commitment is usually within about uh, 12 minutes. So, uh, you know, there's there's the 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 range of responsiveness. Uh, Greg, you're probably in about the same responsiveness uh, timeline that I am. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but again, I posted in the uh, the chat box there the direct link, but it's financialadvisorwealth.com forward slash inner circle. And that's the uh, the direct link that you can go click on that and register for this. And you'll immediately get access to the digital materials and then you'll get mailed uh, in pretty short order out of uh, Wichita, Kansas. You'll get, you'll get mailed all of the uh, physical materials as well. And then you'll be put on the, the monthly cycle to get invitations by text and email uh, to the, um, monthly mastery session where we focus on an individual tactic and the monthly uh, Q&A section where we answer any and all questions, uh, oftentimes mostly dominate on whatever that month's tactic is, but whatever else you may be working on. And then the 
the open discussion forum is available for anybody on any topic that that you want you know anything within within reason within our our wheelhouse at any time and again our our mission is not to educate you on the same material that say a uh, you know a, a CFA course might do although we probably could do a better job on at least the economic side of it than the you know CFA uh, the, the course that I went through anyway um I was cringing a little bit on that one Greg um I do think that all financial advisors need a little bit better foundation in uh, macro and microeconomics, but that's maybe just my academic background speaking. Um, but our mission isn't to educate you or usurp your judgment in the way that you're pointing your clients, the advice you're giving them. We're not trying to uh, to get in the, the middle of that or, or have any say in that whatsoever. What we are focused on doing is creating a much better sales orchestration process where before you even sit down to talk to somebody, you're perceived as the expert and dramatically improve your, your closing ratios. Most of you, I imagine, think that your closing ratio is great, but if you uh, uh, five times or 10 times the number of quality prospects you have coming through, your systems might fall apart. That's what we tend to see. And then we open the floodgate and give you a lot of different um, effective tactics, a parthenon of tactics to flood people in the front door and then as somebody moves into that next level that higher level uh coaching as their revenue grows they then need people management uh practice management they need uh, a better focus on longer term uh client relationships contact um referrals etc and they need multi-generational marketing and sales process as well as really managing to get the marketing delegated not abdicated and get those things done through other people as well but um uh, mindy anything to any anything to add to any of that stuff and of course if they have any any questions on that they're welcome to call you and and register or if, if they're if they're in the quarter million and up category would be happy to talk to them up about the next level uh what i would recommend is just go get yourself into this lower level this inner circle uh, program right now because again it's a very limited time offer and it's the bonuses are um, uh, a, a loan paid for the first year of of tuition for the program and uh, from there we we will go through the process of really helping you shape the right strategy and give you the tactics to fill your pipeline with much higher quality new people uh, coming in as clients and then to retain them long term and create a, a much better multi generational strategy and a much better uh, referral strategy. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, everybody should get started on this now so we can get moving on where everybody's uh, planning is now and into the summer. With yeah, yeah, absolutely. And again, this was a webinar format. It wasn't an open Q&A, but anybody who has any specific questions about anything, we're happy to answer them, happy to set a time to talk to them. Just give Mindy a call again, 303-808-87, what is 8719? 8719. Uh, and then uh, uh, go and register uh, for the program. We'll get you plugged into the discussion form and get you plugged into the other materials. On that note, we'll call it a day unless you, gen uh, lady or gentleman, have uh, anything to, to add to this. No, we look forward to seeing everybody and helping you work with your practice. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. And uh, Greg, I will see you in uh, another five minutes, I guess. Yes, sir. Thanks, Greg.